Hi, I'm Bethany, and that's Drew. Venice is known for its bohemian residents and attracting the artistic and the unique. Today we're exploring a place that truly personifies a colorful spirit and the artistic soul, and it just so happens to be someone's home. We'll be joining the creators of this unusual home that you have to see to believe. It's the Mosaic Tile House, coming up on Out of Tea Out of Seeds. We are on our way to see the mosaic tile house. For this episode, we're not going to make a map right. because this is a private invitation by the owners to come check out this place and we don't want these people to have to worry about unwanted solicitors and trick-or-treaters. They do offer tours though. They do. Which is really cool. By reservation. Yeah. Oh that my gosh. Would, that would have to be it, right? Yep. It's a big coral reef. <laughs> the fence in front alone is worth it. Is a work of art. I have so many questions for these people. Wow. I think it's safe to bet this is the right house. Look at this. There's wrenches and spoons. Pieces of mirrors. We're not even inside yet. Yeah, this is just the fence in the front. Hey guys. Hey. Hi. 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 I'm Bethany. Hi Bethany. Hi Bethany. Hi. Sherry, right? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Gonzalo. Welcome to the Thank Mosaic you. Tile House. This is, well, this is you can't tell from the street. We're officially inside the Mosaic Tile House. The outside, which is crazy. Is that a fortune cookie? Fortune cookie, fortune spilling out. So you guys are planning your own food too? Yep. Along with everything else? Salad bar, Sal <laughs> lots of tomatoes, potatoes, onions, Swiss chard. So how long have you guys been working on the house? It's 25 years as of March. 1994. Wow. Where do you guys get all this stuff from? Find it, donations. We used to go to garage sales and swap meets mm -hmm. just to get other stuff than tile, just to make the surface more interesting. It's all the details. I'm seeing coffee mugs, I'm seeing pot lids, benches. Look at this. Yeah, it's a real bathtub that was cut out, made for a couch, and then was given to us and I took the couch part out. How many hours a day did you guys normally work on the house? We do several things. Uh, okay. Paint a couple of hours, weld a couple of hours, do some clay a couple of hours, go bike for 18 hours, and uh, <laughs> that takes care of the day. He's very fast when he does tiling, so it isn't that we work a lot. We just work very intensely. Sherry makes the tiles doing abstracts on her tiles. And she also uses cookie cutters. Oh, those are, oh yeah. Yeah, all kinds of things. Got all this stuff over here too. Oh, it's another bathtub. Another bathtub was <laughs> given to us, right? And then I had him do this bump out so I could uh, plant more veggies. What are we looking for? There, seem like squash. Oh. What do you have planted there? Squash, squash. and it's squash. already, they're that long already. Oh my gosh. I just planted them. Then there's this side of the house if you want to look at it. Sure. Come on back here. This was probably done first. This was probably the first side of the house we did. We did this long before we did the other side. We used to have a drinking problem. <laughs> so that's what we did with the bottles. Recycle them. <laughs> and we melted them and then uh, made them part of the design. Yeah, I was telling him, I need to drink more wine so I can make art. <laughs> I mean, that's a good yeah. logic, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Just trying to make something here. And then other uh, potters have given us stuff. This particular artist, Cindy Tyro, she's in San Diego. So she did things that she couldn't sell. So in a way, she kind of became a part of the, yeah. the house. And she visits every once in a while, brings more things for us. Do you have anything that you haven't finished that yeah. you're working on currently? Most of the downstairs is finished, but the upstairs, we haven't done anything. That'll be another 20 more years. <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> but then come on over here and, and, and turn around because up here, the iguana. Oh, yeah. there he is. And then the tail swirls around. Looks like a giraffe. giraffe -a It's a cross between a giraffe and a kangaroo. And then on the pouch, we put the garden supplies just to be cute. I requested a box for the tools, and this is what he built. If you just say a box and give him that much leeway. <laughs> I know, <laughs> that's right. I mean, really. You don't know what you're gonna get. That's right. Now here's the house when we first moved in. What? The only thing I recognize are those two things on the roof. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Never occurred to take pictures in the beginning because we didn't know this was gonna happen. Right. Of so I found this one buried somewhere. 
Gonzalo does these incredible automatons. This is a man fishing for a wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then instead of using bait, he uses promises. Ah. And after 25 years, the promises did work. <laughs> Thank you. End of story. <laughs> the end. And then this one. So what's this one? This is Rocky, part one. <laughs> da, 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 da. I don't have the music for this. Tell me when. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> He's getting tired. In the kitchen, I specialize in these bizarre appliances. Antique stove, for one thing, purple and pink. The funny little teapots. And then uh, that's a rice cooker, the pink thing. Really cool uh, microwave orange. Some of the things are thrown on the potter's wheel, and then uh, Sherry does these things in, that are handmade. Pinch pot, large pinch, version. Pinch pot. Large version of pinch pots. Yeah, you still have everything you need. Did he ever make anything that you had to get rid of or just said, this is not going to work? No. I don't think so. Well, you know, we've made changes. I mean, we did. Uh, yeah, we have. You know, if it's got to look good. So, Gonzalo, this is obviously a huge project, but it had to have started somewhere. Where did the idea begin? Yes, um, after we finished building the studios, we, mm -hmm. the first thing we started fixing up in the house was the bathroom. Okay. Sherry made some tiles, and this is where it started. So, originally, they were just going to be four by four tiles. Uh -huh with little abstract designs. Yeah. We worked them out many times, and finally we had a break up to go around the tub, and that's where the fun happened. You can only do one piece at a time, but the process is just therapeutic. It's just, it's a great uh, pastime. And you sort of fell in love with that I process. I just fell in love with the process, yes. Cool. I'm happy that my wife is crazy enough to go along with all this. <laughs> it makes it so much easier to experiment. Mm -hmm. It gives you all the freedom to do, and it just... Thank you, wife. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this uh, stained glass here. Well, I make, um, I take the doors off and then just move the uh, stained glass around until I can get it as tight as possible. Mm -hmm. And then the exciting part is you take each piece off and glue it and put it back. Mm -hmm. Then it's grouted in the spaces that are left. So this is all just attached to the original glass of yes. the door. That's so cool. May we uh, see the studio? We can go into the studio. So this is my part of the studio. Uh -huh. And I do portraits of Gonzalo because he's so photogenic and so <laughs> sweet. And uh, then I do portraits of him and me together. Uh -huh. And then these are my paintings, and they're multi-canvas, and they're a nod to the altarpieces of Europe. They take about two or three years to do because I start with one canvas, and then it says, oh, go this way or go this way. I must admit, walking through the house and, and coming in for the first time, it's like sensory overload. Oh, of course it is. Because <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. As a photographer, there's not a bad shot in the house. True. And then this is the areas where I work. This okay. is for the fuse glass, mm. both sides, and then this side is where I do the glazing, and these are all my glazes. I have a vague memory of glazing from like from elementary school, school yeah, and, of course. and then when you fire it, it comes out that wow. beautiful color. And then we build stuff with the clay, a slab roller and okay. lots of clay. <laughs> so now this is where I work. Mm -hmm. oh, it's like it's like every inch. I mean, even the steps are painted, and there's there's yes. tiles down here too. Also in the marriage contract. You know. <laughs> in the marriage contract. <laughs> I keep hearing those two words. She has a larger studio. That was the... the uh, Smart. Put it in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the things that I do. This was uh, just a way to display the drawings. There, there is no one story. Are these preliminary sketches of what you've built inside? Or, or are uh, these just random sketches or what? They're just random sketches. Sometimes they're good enough to put into a painting, but... Mostly it's just random. So we're officially near the end of our tour. And I actually have one more question for each of you guys. So for you, do you have any advice for people who are trying to break into the art world who have never done anything before in their life and they just have this need to be artistic? Like, do you have any advice for those people who are up and coming? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> First of all, because of our, the way things have gone financially in this country, you really have to 
concentrate first of all in preparing yourself for a good job mm -hmm. but never giving up your artwork and doing it when you're working on your other things you need to do both you need to express both sides of yourself the money part and the creative side sometimes people are lucky and they can do both at the same time that's the dream right there mm -hmm. being the able dream. to do both yeah being <laughs> able to do both but keep your dream alive and eventually you will find a way did you ever want to quit Oh yes, of course. I've been doing art for 60 years since I was 19. And of course there were many times when I didn't do that much because when you're young, so much takes over. So yeah, of course. Distractions. Distractions take over. Or the need to do other things or traveling, even that. Traveling is very hard on doing creative, your own creative work, because you get so distracted. <laughs> yes. And then for you, what is the secret to a happy relationship? Humor. Huh? Ah, there Amen. it is. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you both so much. Um, you wanted to add something. It looked no, like no, I, I, humor. I, I, <laughs> That's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, you guys have built something incredible, not only your relationship, but this beautiful place. And we're so happy that we could be here today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this hugs all me. I know. We can't wait to see you. what you guys do next. The Mosaic Tile House, a place that truly embodies the term visual feast. That's true. If you'd like to come see it for yourself, tours are offered on Saturdays. And for ticket information, visit their website, mosaictilehouse.com. And a huge thank you to Sherry and Gonzalo for giving us this exclusive look into their incredible home. For more of our adventures, feel free to check out our website, oddityodysseys.com. And we will see you next time. Do I have wings? You are an angel. Uh... With a lot of cups and faces and tile bits stuck in your wings. I wouldn't have it any other way. It must be terribly difficult to fly like that. I wouldn't try it. <laughs>